Welcome, everyone. We're so glad that you're here this morning. Please join us as we start our worship. the famous one, or at least he should be. Can I get an amen? amen. <laughs> if you're not already standing, please stand for the processional hymn. What a saint. Atoning sacrifice, keeper of this life.
Bless him. The Son and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that they may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, the first commandment is this. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. As we prepare to celebrate the mysteries of Christ, let us call them out our sins. Oh, merciful God, I confess that I have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what I have done and by what I have left undone. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved my neighbors myself. I am truly sorry and I humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on me and forgive me that I may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty and merciful Lord, grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God in the highest. To his people on earth. Glory to God in the highest. Peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father.
We ask that you would come among us and have your own way. You're, you are what we need. Yes, Lord. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the gates, let heaven on in. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Come on. Fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the gates, let heaven on in. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Come on. Rest on us, Lord. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Come rest on us. You're all we want. You're all we want. Holy Spirit. Come rest on us. You're all we want. You're all we need. That's the prayer, Lord. Holy Spirit.
got a little ways to go. Let's just reverence his presence. Spirit says, allow the Holy Spirit to sing through you. For as long as Jesus is singing in you, then the song that you sing never ends. It's a never-ending love. Mercy that endure forever. Thank you. Lord, Holy Spirit, lead us into all truth. In you, we always have a reason to praise. Yes, 
praises, Lord. Still got a reason to praise. Thank you, Lord. Because you're the God of the breakthrough. When I'm breaking down, you be working a way through. And there's no way out in this one thing I know. You're still on the throne. So whatever together. Pray. That song is really about encouragement in the midst of circumstances, right? And we all have circumstances. Anybody else have circumstances? Come on. And a lot of us want to circumvent our circumstances. Uh -oh. But what God wants us to do is take a stance in our circumstances. Yes, Lord. Right? Because no weapon formed against us will prosper. We are more than conquerors through him who loves us. Did you know that today? Because the enemy wants to distract us from that reality. And he wants us to focus on our circumstances rather than on the Lord. But the Lord has given us the victory. And so we don't fight for the victory. We fight from the victory. Are you with me? This is spiritual warfare. And it's a battle for our minds. And it's so important to protect our minds and to understand the lens through which we look at the things of the world and the circumstances so that we could face them and resolve them according to God's will. And so this is what I do every single day when I get up in the morning. I remind myself of certain truths. And these are the lenses through which I evaluate the things that are taking place within my circumstances. I want to share them with you things that I tell myself every day that I know to be true, that enables me by God's grace to walk in victory. Number one, God loves me. He loves me. Right? Amen. God loves you. He doesn't just love people. So are you with me? God is with me. I have been predestined to eternal life in Christ Jesus. God works his great mercy and that God plans my circumstances to make me like Jesus so that I could experience the full of his as I surrender everything that the enemy tried to against me in Jesus Christ and work out for my deliverance amen, amen. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To you are perfect in all of your ways. Yes, you are, Lord. Good, good father. You're a good, good father. You, you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And we're loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am.
blessed son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of the bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in unity with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. You know, David said, I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. So I think this is a good place to be, especially on, on, on a Sunday morning. So welcome, and we welcome everyone who is watching uh, via live stream. If you have a question or a prayer request, you can virtually raise your hand, and we have a host that will answer your question or to pray with you. If you're watching at a time other than during a, a live stream, uh, please contact the church. We'd like to help you in your walk in discipleship. So now the peace of the Lord be with you all. Peace. Offer each other the sign of God's peace. Peace be with you. Welcome to Intercessor Church. We are so glad to see you today. Whether you are visiting with us for the first time, returning after a while, or you're here every week. Together, we seek to love God, love people, and build disciples. We desire to reach people where they are at, walk alongside them, and impact those around us so that they may know Jesus. To connect, please see the welcome card in the back of the seat in front of you and download the Intercessor app. Welcome home. first reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 3, verses 12 to 19. So when Peter saw it, he responded to the people, Men Faith in his name has made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yes, the faith which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Yet now, brethren, I know that you did it in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But those things which God foretold by the mouth of all his prophets, that the Christ would suffer, he has thus fulfilled. Repent converted that your sins may be blotted out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. It's the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. A second reading is 1 John chapter 3 verses 1 through 5. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. That's why I am not ashamed of the gospel.
the Lord. May the Lord be on our minds and on our lips and on our hearts as we hear his holy gospel. The holy gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. We are reading from Luke's Gospel, chapter 24, beginning at verse 36. Now as they said these things, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were terrified and frightened, and supposed they had seen a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Behold, my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. But while they still did not believe for joy and marveled, he said to them, Have you any food here? So they gave him a piece of a broiled fish and some honeycomb, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. Then he said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Let's pray. Dear God, we come before your presence and we thank you for another day to be in your house, experience you and your Holy Spirit in our lives and your word. And just like you did to the disciples, we pray that you open our understanding, the eyes of our understanding so that we can hear the word that you want to give us today. You know our circumstances, just like Deacon Eddie was sharing, we all have circumstances, and you know them all, and you know what we need. You know what we need to hear. And we pray, God, that as we hear your word, your Holy Spirit will speak to us and meet us where we are. Without you, we cannot do anything. Therefore, we invite you again to come into our hearts, into our minds. And we thank you, dear Lord, for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us here. And for those who are listening on, online, on any platform in the internet, we pray for them as well, that you meet them where they are. You know their word, the word that they need. You know the circumstances. And we pray for your blessings. In the name of Jesus, the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. For me, it's a privilege to be able to share a ton of the things that God has been telling me and and speaking to my heart. And uh, uh, when I get up here, it's an honor to be able to share those things. And it is my prayer that God will touch each one of you. I think that God orchestrated everything around us to, to let us know how much he loves us and uh, also to uh, meet us, you know, to meet you where you are. Uh, and I hope that just coming to church is not just, uh, you know, the things to do because it's the thing to do to come to church on Sunday morning, you know, I'm here. I think you're here, for a purpose. I think you're here because God wants you here. I think you're here because God wants to uh, minister to your heart. You're here because and to, to your mind, to your heart, to your soul, he wants to make a difference in your life. And I pray that the Holy Spirit, again, will open up the eyes of your understanding so that you can embrace the 
phrase, the word that God is going to tell you. We see this uh, acronym here. Uh, we're looking at the day now that we're going to have to learn language. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, these acronyms, uh, especially people, the gen and, uh, you know, those younger people that use uh, those uh, acronyms on the Internet. I remember one day that uh, I asked a question to a, a, a friend who's a young, he used to do that. I sent him a question, uh, I sent him a question, and uh, he answered, I-D-K, you know, I-D-K, I-D-K. I didn't know what IDK was. So I turned out to my wife, Nancy, and I said, Nancy, what's IDK? I don't know. She said, I don't know. What, what do you mean you don't know? <laughs> IDK, it became like a whole third, you know, you know, what's on second, uh, and she said, Oh my goodness, every time that I preach, I have to use this microphone. I, 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 use my, I like to use my hands, you know. Uh, but my goodness, uh, can I take this off then? Uh, Give me a second. Okay. Well, thank God. So, so you know, another one is uh, BTW. You know, BTW. BTW, is that a car? BMW? You know, BTW. Is, by the way, you know, how many of you know these things? Uh, am I the only one? You know. The, the most familiar one is LOL, you know, <laughs> laugh out loud. Uh, the other one is um, BRB, be right back. TTYL, talk to you later. Can you imagine? You know, you can form a sentence saying BTL, BRB, TTLY, and they will understand. But to us, it would be like speaking in tongues, <laughs> right? <laughs> BTL, BTL, my goodness. Yes, so I-Y-K-Y-K, it's a common abbreviation used on social media to indicate that a post on me- or message contains an inside joke or a reference or a shared experience that only a certain group of people will understand. So that's why if you know, you know. If you're a part of that group, if you know, you know. I am not too much on social media, so I don't know. (laughs) I just hear these things, but I don't know. Now, if you know, you know has a deeper understanding, deeper meaning. Why do people know but don't know? How you find yourself in that situation where you know something but don't know something? We men think we know how to put things together sometimes, and we get the instructions. I say, oh, I know how to do it. We don't read the instruction, but when we finish, you know, putting things together, we see that we're missing a part, or, or we have an extra part. So we knew, but we didn't know, right? Why do they, people say that they know, but don't follow? Don't follow the instruction. I believe it's because they knowing is just a head knowledge. It's based on head knowledge without the heart knowledge, without the understanding. And God wants you to not only know about him, God wants you to know him. This one thing I ask in Jeremiah 9.23, that you know me and that you understand me. Because when you know me and understand me, your life will be transformed. Your circumstances will start to change. No matter how hard your circumstances are, they will change. We are starting a new series about the difference between knowing information, also called head knowledge, and about knowing in your heart. And it's important for us to reason together. God doesn't want you again. I'm going to be repeating this, and forgive me if I'm repeating myself. But it's important for us to know God, not only from the head, but only in our hearts. You can be coming here every Sunday after Sunday, Sunday after Sunday, and repeating all the prayers, and repeating everything, singing all the songs, But then when you leave out of here, it will be the same. You you still have the same struggles. You still feel 
hopeless. You still feel that you're sinking. But let me tell you something that can change when you know him. So if you know, if you think you know, you know. I want you to know, get out of here knowing that personal God, that personal Jesus in you who will bring a change to your life. Head knowledge declares God's truth about him and his word, but there's not understanding in the heart. You can know the whole word, but that might, you might not be changing in your life. And then you ask yourself, why do I go through the same thing over and over and over? For example, we understand the truth that God is peace, right? Jehovah Shalom. Yes, he is the, the God of peace. But when we are in the middle of the storm, we forget and become worried, fearful, anxious, depressed, with our hearts still unable to understand or unaware of his peace that is in us. My peace I give you, Jesus says. So what are you going through this morning? What are you going through this past week in your personal life, in your job, in your family, in your relations? What are you going through? Do you need peace? Where the Prince of Peace is with you. But it has to be transformed from head, from head knowledge into your heart. In the midst of the storm. See, a lot of us want us to, God to take away the storm or to calm the storm. But we don't understand that the way to calm the storm is by allowing him to become real in our heart. Hard knowledge is when God's truth becomes real in our heart and leads us to a personal relationship with him. God's knowledge, head, heart knowledge, you understand God's truth and allow that truth to become real in your life, in the midst of your storm. I think I share with you that many times when I was in uh, a time in ministry uh, back in the 80s, I went through a tough time, a hard time in ministry. In ministry. I became weary and I became anxious and I became uh, depressed and I became... Uh, and I would go to God and say, Lord, I am distressed. Please take this distress away from me. And it would not go away. And I was reading Psalm 20, 91. Psalm 91 towards the end says, I will be with you in the midst of your distress. When I embraced that truth, that God is with me in the midst of my distress, my world started changing. Because I started understanding, I started to know that God was in the midst of my distress. So I started, I stopped asking, take away my distress. God grow in my heart. I started praying for God's presence in my heart. And God's presence and knowledge of him started growing in me. And those little, those stress that was going through started becoming smaller and smaller. And God started become bigger and bigger and bigger. Because I started to know God. Not only in my head knowledge, but also in my heart. Jonathan Edwards, a preacher, philosopher, and theologian of the 18th century said the following. And this is very interesting. Your mind can know honey, that honey is sweet, right? People can tell you it's sweet. You've read books about it, etc. But if you haven't actually tasted it, you know with your head, but not with your heart. When you actually taste it, you experience it for yourself, but you know it in full way. And you can know it in your heart. You see? You can know honey. You can hear about honey. You can read about it. 
But until you taste it, you won't have a full knowledge of it. It's like that in our experience, experience with God. Does that make sense? Does it make sense to you? Can you apply that to your current situation? You can know about God. You can read about God. You can see him moving. But it is not until you, just like Psalm 34 says, come and taste that the Lord is good. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Come and taste that the Lord is good. It's not until that happens that your life is going to start being transformed. I was reading Psalm 19, and Psalm 19 is one of the greatest psalms, I mean, that explain about God's creation. Heavens declare the glory of God. Creation declare the glory of God. And in that introduction, an introduction to that uh, psalm in a book that I usually read, uh, uh, written by uh, a Jewish publisher, Art Scroll, they gave a, a, a brief introduction to this psalm. And Rabbi Hirsch, a major religious thinker of the mid-18th century, wrote this. God has revealed himself to mankind both in nature and at Mount Sinai. But though a scientific and thoughtful contemplation of nature will lead man to recognize his creator, it is only the revelation of Torah that can teach man how to relate to God, the creator, and achieve perfection and fulfillment of life. You can, you can understand that the heavens declare the glory of God. You can see a flower. A can, flower can tell you that there's a creator. You can recognize that there is a creator. But it's not only until the revelation of the word of God that that creator become a real creator, a God, a personal God to you. And it will help you to achieve perfection, maturity, and also a life with meaning. It is the application of God's truth to our hearts that bring us closer to him. And as a result, brings transformation and a life with meaning. See, it's interesting that uh, we, we sing a lot of songs that declare who we are. Um, I'm no longer a slave to fear, right? I am a child of God. And we sing it, we raise our hands, and when it's time to ministry for prayer, Father, can you pray for me? Why? What's, the, what's your request? I am full of fear. Uh, I'm afraid. Well, you just declare, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. So it tells me, and I'm not putting anyone down. Uh, 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 what I'm saying is that we have to understand that God wants to communicate in a real way to us, not only having a head knowledge, but a heart knowledge. Jesus made himself known to us so that we may truly and sincerely know him in our hearts, thus becoming like him and make him known to others. So if you know, you know. And if I know, I know. You will follow. If you know me, follow me. Believe in me. Jesus says, uh, you will know the truth, and the truth, what? Will set you free. But how can we walk in bondage all the time? Because the truth has not been sinking in our hearts. And God wants you throughout this series for you to reflect on the truthfulness of God, not only on your head knowledge. The evidence of our true knowledge of Jesus is demonstrated by keeping, observing his teachings and obeying all he has commanded with all our hearts, just as he obeyed God the Father and his word. He was obedient to the cross, to death, and death on the cross. 
and God raised him from the dead. And then he goes and tells his disciples, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go, to, um, go and make disciples to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe, to obey all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. That is the word of the Lord. And it's important for us to understand that in order for us to demonstrate true knowledge of God in our heart is by keeping obeying his word just like Jesus did. Jesus was tempted in everything, so he, he can, yet without sin, so he can empathize with us when we go through circumstances, difficult circumstances. And if we know that, when I'm going through a difficult circumstances, I just call the name of Jesus. I call the name of the Lord. People ask me, I'm, going, I'm being tempted in this, in this area in my life. How can I overcome it? I say, invite Jesus into it. If you're having a struggle with any addiction, invite Jesus into it and say, Jesus, what would you do? Can you help me? Can you help me through? And he will help you through. If you're struggling with any kind of addition, bring him on. And if you feel, no, no, I'm, not, I'm going to live in mouth, then this is serious warfare. Because you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And Jesus wants to set you free. The religious leaders ask Jesus, who do you make yourself out to be and Jesus answered if I glorify myself my glory is worth nothing but if my father who glorifies me but it's my father who glorifies me of whom you say he is our God he's talking to religious leader who had an understanding and a knowledge of God in their head but it would it was not on their heart and Jesus continues saying you do not know him but I know him and if I should say that I do not know him, I would be like you, a liar. But I do know him and keep his word. So you understand, head knowledge will only give you information, but not transformation. But when you allow that knowledge of God to come to your heart, you will know God. And as you know God, you will be set free. It is our prayer that throughout this series, Jesus, Jesus will open the eyes of your understanding as we, and you and I, read the word of God as we read on the gospel today. In the gospel, Jesus appeared to his disciples, and they were afraid. And then when Jesus saw that they were afraid, Jesus started telling them everything that the scripture talked about Jesus, starting from Moses, the prophets, the book of Psalm. And then he said that Jesus opened the eyes of their understanding, their hearts, so that they can understand. And they were joyful after that. He wants to do the same thing with you today. 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 God wants you to open the eyes of your understanding. So that is our prayer, that as we start this series, that if you know, you know that you will really know and then follow him. We will, talk, we, will talk, we will be talking about knowing who we are and our blessed assurance. Next week, knowing his voice, following, knowing how to love him and others. And then we'll finish the series with knowing and obeying his commandments. And I grew up in a denomination that well given to the word of God. And one of the things that they used to tell me is we cannot keep the Ten Commandments. It's true. We're going to fall in one of them. And thank God by grace. We live by grace, by Jesus. So when they taught me that, I stopped thinking about the Ten Commandments, but that's the, last, that's the last teaching, the last sermon on this series, you know, knowing 
and obeying the Ten Commandments and how the Ten Commandments that we read and hear all the time can make a difference in our lives. There are four things that God wants you to know in your heart today. The number one, God wants you to know the manner of love he has lavished on you. He wants you to know the manner of love the Father has lavished, have poured out, bestowed, given you. God loves you just as you are. With all your flaws, with all your mistakes, he loves you just like you are. No matter how far you wandered from him, he's not angry at you. He cares for you. He has forgiven you. He has reconciled you to himself through Jesus Christ our Lord. Does that make something in your mind when you hear those things? And in your heart? I am forgiven. I am loved by God. Behold what manner of love the Father has lavished on us. That we are called children of God. Second thing that God wants you to know today, that you know that you're for sure that you are a child of God. Are you a child of God? Yes. For sure? How do you come to that conclusion? Because of a head knowledge? Or because you know in your heart the Holy Spirit of God bear witness to our spirit that we are, the, not that we may be or may be, you know, that we are children of God. God wants you to know that for sure today. Not just because you heard her, but because it's a reality. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us, unto you, that you are called children of God, that you are a child of God. And in the Greek says, and so we are. Affirmative. And so we are. I am a child of God. Can you say that? Say it with me and my brothers, my sisters. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. You are a child of God. And the Greek word is technon here. When he say we are called children of God, you are a progeny, a descendant of, an offspring of God. Can you see yourself like that? Or... You probably don't understand that truth because you're only thinking of in your mind, I'm a child of God. But if I do know that truth in my head and then I bring it to my heart, I will see myself as a descendant of God. But as many as received him, have you received him? To them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name... Who were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of men, but of God. So you are a child of God. I am a child of God. We are children of God. Let us walk as children of God. God wants you to feel understood, safe, protected, heard, purposeful, connected to something bigger, which is Him. You are the child of God. Don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. So you have to walk with your head up and say, I am a child of God. Don't let the enemy belittle you or you yourself belittle yourself saying, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not worthy. I am no, nobody. Yes, you are somebody. You are a child of God. Amen. You have been purchased. Yes. 
And the price that was paid for you was the life of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To Him glory and honor. And He gives us, He gives us a blessed assurance. That's the third thing that I want you to know today. Behold what manner of love, of love the Father has given to us that we are called children of God. But we have not been revealed to us what we're going to be. Because we're going through this world. We live in this world full of sin, full of problems. And sometimes we fall. And then we have to go back to God and receive forgiveness through, through Jesus Christ. But there will come a time. Where we'll be free from every sickness. We will be free from pain. We will be free from trouble. Because we're going to be just like he is. Jesus is pure. God wants you to know that Jesus is your blessed assurance. For through him, you have access by one spirit to the Father. We used to sing a song. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. How many know that song? He is my rock. He is my fortress. He is my deliverer. In him will I trust. Do you know him? Do you know him? He is your rock. He is your blessed assurance. If you stand on him, you stand firm. No matter how life storms come and blow in your life, if you're standing on that rock, he is your rock. He is your fortress. He is your deliverer. In him, I will trust. Praise the name of Jesus. Do you know him? Do you know him? God wants you, number four, God wants you to purify yourself, having Jesus as your prototype. Don't look at yourself. If I look at myself, there are times when I look at myself, I say, my goodness, uh, you know, especially when you get older, you know, you, not, you don't look the same as uh, <laughs> you were when you were 25, you know what I mean? I had hair, and, that, and then I look at myself, look at the wrinkles, all everything that's going on, and I say, well, my goodness, you know, I don't like you. Wait. But God made me that way. And there's a process in, 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 in life called aging. And we don't like to accept the aging. And then we start believing ourselves. But in this earthly tabernacle that we live in, we had to look to our prototype, Jesus. In view of knowing the manner of God's love for you, you know that you are a child of God. You know you have a living hope and an assurance in Jesus. God wants you to purify yourself in here, in the here and now. Just as Jesus, our prototype is pure. Another song that came to my mind when I was reading this uh, and preparing is, I want to be more like you, Jesus. You know that song? My goodness, that's all those back in the days. I want to be a vessel you can use. I want to be like you, Jesus. In the midst of your circumstances, ask yourself the question, what would Jesus do? And, do, and then follow him. Follow him. And what makes a separation between us and him is sin. And sin is making an agreement with the enemy, signing a contract that can only be broken by one who can advocate for you. It's only through repentance and renunciation that we are reconciled back to God. This is where renewal begins. And I finish with this quote from this verse. 
My children, I am writing this to you so that you will not sin. But if we, but if anyone does sin, we have an advocate who pleads our case before the Father. He is Jesus Christ, the one who is truly righteous. He himself is the sacrifice that atones for our sins. And not only for our sins, but the sins of the whole world. If you know him, you know him. If you know, you know. When our head knowledge merges with our heart knowledge, our intellect, our emotions, and feelings merge and become one, leading us to a true experience in our relationship with God, our own self, and with one another. If I know, if you know, you know, then follow him. What have God telling you? There are some questions that you can discuss in your community group. And these questions will help you to reflect in the word that God has brought today. He just don't want you to know him here. He wants you to know him in your heart. And there's a song that Paul usually, Paul a place usually, change my heart of God. Make it ever true. Mold me. Make me, break me, mold me. This is what I pray. If you have not had an encounter with the risen Christ, your prototype, this is a type to say, to tell him, I just knew you because I knew the historical Jesus. But I want that historical Jesus to be my personal Jesus. I want to invite you into my heart. Let us pray. Dear God, I thank you for your word. And we want to know you more. Not only in our heads, but in our hearts. Because it is there that the Holy Spirit produces change and leads us into a new and powerful and vibrant relationship with you. If you are listening to this word of God and you have not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, this is the day that the Lord has made for you. Just in a simple prayer of faith, you can say, Jesus, I knew you from my head only. I heard about you only. But I want to know you in my heart. Therefore, I open the door of my heart and I invite you to come in. Be my Savior. Forgive all my sins. Be my rock. Be my fortress. Be my deliverer. And I will put my trust in you. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for saving me. And I give you my life, my mind, my emotions, my body, my whole being, just like I am, just as I am. I come to you and I thank you for loving me so much. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Blessings to you. Let us acknowledge one another with the sign of peace as we collect the offerings. Giving to God is a part of how we worship Him. Stepping out in faith through giving is a measure of the heart. God honors what we give. We've updated our ways to give online to make it more simple, faster, and secure. Visit intercessorchurch.com give to set up your recurring gift. All you need is your phone number. You can also text the word GIVE to 833-255-0312. Thank you for your generosity. How great the chasm 
that lay between us how high the mountain i could not climb in desperation i turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night then through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul the work is finished the end is written jesus christ my living hope who could imagine so great a mercy what heart could fathom such boundless grace the god of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame the cross has spoken i am forgiven the king of kings calls me his own beautiful savior i'm yours forever Jesus Christ, my living Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Okay. 
you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive this bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become the body of Christ. Praise God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive this wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become the blood of Christ. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we bring these tithes and offerings before you. They will be used in your church for, the, for your work that you have set before us for the furthering of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to lord you yet more glorious when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our case before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. so that they may become for us the body and blood of, your Lord, of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, the death he freely accepted. He took bread. He gave you thanks. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died, died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ will come again. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread and this cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Make us grow in love together with our patriot Craig, our Bishop Brett, and all the clergy. Remember those for whom we now pray. This is a time for you to bring someone that you know that needs a touch from the Lord. Draw our hearts to remember the poor and broken. As we receive the body and blood of Jesus, may we be transformed to become the body of Christ to the world. Lord, have mercy on us all. Lord, you have made us worthy to share eternal life with Blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ, Joseph, her husband, and with the apostles, the martyrs, and all the saints. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ.
by him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now let us pray in the words that our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should end on my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts with thanksgiving.
it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. Through it all, through it all, it is well. Through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. It is well. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. You know, um, that message that we heard today, I'm telling you, it, it's for you or for somebody specific, but I think it's for all of us. Before it even happened, um, I was just up there doing a worship song, and I said, Lord, do you have a word for, for, for the people? Uh, and then all of a sudden, Deacon Ed comes up, and he tells you the four things that he does first thing in the morning, from loving God, being a child of God, that he's blessed by God, and that, uh, that uh, he's called to be holy in all of his circumstances. And then Father comes up and starts expounding on, on that. So I love it when God pulls things together, you know what I mean? So, so uh, think about what was said, discuss it in the uh, community groups that you're involved in, and then ask God to, to enlighten your heart and like what he did in the gospel, open the understandings of our minds to know him better than he did for the apostles. And now, may the blessing of God which surpasses all understanding of him and of his son, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you and with those you love and care for this day and forever. Amen. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Hallelujah! 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 Mm. Hallelujah! Let's think about what time it is. And these are the days of Elijah, declaring the ways of the Lord. And these are the days of his servant Moses, righteousness being restored. And these are the days of great trials, of famine and darkness and sword. And we are the voice in the desert, crying, prepare ye the way. Behold, come on. Redeem the time, amen? Okay, let somebody know what time it is this week. The Lord is coming. God bless you. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah.
Jehovah. There's no God like 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 Jehovah. There's no God. Say it again. There's no God like Jehovah. 